My name is Maggie Rivas Rodriguez. I'm interviewing Petrita Alanis Sanchez for the Voces Oral History Center at the University of Texas at Austin. Thank you so much, Mrs. Sanchez, for being here with us today. I'm going to start off just explaining a little bit about um, the project so that we make sure that you understand where this is going. So we're going to videotape this interview. And at the end, I'm going to ask you some questions about how much you want released to the public and how much you want us to just put in the library. But this interview will be housed at the Nettie Lee Benson Latin American Collection at the UT campus. That's on the far side, the, the east side of campus. And it'll be there um, and whatever other material you, you wish to share with us. So I'll ask you a series of questions after the interview so we can make sure that we get your permission for everything we need. Uh, but we really are, are super excited to have you here, and thank you so much to your family for bringing you all the way from Beeville to be with us uh, today. So if we could start off a little bit telling me, I'd like for you to tell me if you could, about growing up in Beeville. Was there a separate school for the, for the Mexican-American kids and the Anglo kids there? Yes. Tell me about that school. Well, there was two schools. One was a Catholic school, which is where I went. To the Catholic school, puros Mexicanos. So, you know, we all knew each other. We all knew each other. So, and it was uh, um, the monjas, the, the um, sisters that were teaching. So. So about how many kids were in your class? And oh. what is the name of the school? Our Lady of Victory. Our Lady of Victory School. And there were about, in my class, I think there were about um, 25 kids, something. Mm -hmm. So was it just the elementary school, or did it go, did it go all the way to the high school? No, it was elementary. It just went up to eighth grade. Mm -hmm. From then, we went on to high school, which everybody went, Anglos and Mexicanos, everybody. Were there any African Americans at, in Beeville? No. It was just Mexican American well, and Well, there were a few, but we hardly ever saw them because there were so little that were there. So, you know, very few. So, so then in high school, did a lot of the, the Mexican-American kids go to the high school? Yes, a lot of them. So they didn't drop out before that? No, a lot of them did not drop out. That's surprising, because I know in a lot of places, you know, they would, kids would be, a, there were a lot of migrant farm workers, and a lot of them would be discouraged, and so by the time they were in high school, they would just not go to school anymore. No, they, most of them that went to school with me in, in in that little Catholic school, almost all of them went on to high school. Was there, besides the Catholic school, was there another Mexican school? Yeah. It was um, the West Side School. West Side, that was what it's called. it was called. I never did go to that one, though. Why, why do you suppose your parents wanted you to go to the Catholic school and not the Mexican school? I don't know. I don't know, but they wanted us to go all the younger ones to go to Catholic school. My older brothers went to the West Side School. My older brothers, all, all of them. The one that, mm. And they went on to high school. So they did finish high school, your brothers? They, they what? She did, uh, she, they did finish high school, your older brothers? Uh, most of them did. Mm -hmm. so, um, so you lived close to the school. Close to Our Lady of Victory. Yes, a few blocks. A few blocks away. So did you? You would walk over to school every yes. day. Yes. Did you come home for lunch? No, we would take lunch. What would you take for lunch? <laughs> Beans and rice and stuff like that. Like a like a burrito. Uh huh. Something like that. Were there Anglo kids with you too? Hmm? Were there Anglo kids at, at Our Lady of Victory School, or was it just Mexicanos? No, puro Mexicanos. Interesting. Okay. So tell me, your, your father, your father was, uh, what did he do for a living? He worked as a jeweler, is that right? What? 
Your father was he a? Did he work as a jeweler, or was you the jeweler? Was he what? A jeweler? Did he work at a jewelry store? No, 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 no. Oh, where did where did your father work? My father had a garage, and uh, he had another big building next door, and uh, he had a, a restaurant at the big building, and in the corner he he had the garage, <coughs> and uh, we when he bought it. He bought that land because he was living in, 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 in at the ranch. He had a ranch, and he would um, um, do crops, you know, uh, for him. Uh, and he had a lot of um, um, cows and everything else, you know. And he had a lot of tools, like um, tractors and stuff. And one day, he told my mother, because uh, my mother's mother lived it in in the in the city, but you know, in un barrio, un barrio. And uh, one of these days, I'm gonna buy you that house. <laughs> he would tell her, and and she would just say, "You're crazy! You're crazy!" Anyway, when one year he sold everything, he had uh, good crops and everything. And he sold everything and moved to town, bought that property, and my big brothers went to West Side School, and I went to Our Lady Victory, and. Because we were just leaving. Uh, a few blocks from from the school. So was he? So he had the 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 farm or the ranch, and he also had the garage. Is that right? No, no, no. Oh, I see. He had the he ranch. He sold everything at the and ranch, and then he bought the garage. Bought the the you know, and uh, and the 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 house, our big house, was in the corner, facing Bowie Street. He moved it to the back to face Bunro Street. And in the corner, he built the garage. And a lot of people did not have jobs at that time. So, About what year would that have been? Um, I really don't remember, because I must have been about uh, Eleven or twelve years old, you know, I was young, so I don't remember what year that was. And he had the house moved to the back, facing Monroe Street, and he built the garage at the corner, and put two two pumps of gas, so he could have a service sort of station, and start hiring people to help him, and. He, my two older brothers, see, he knew this man that had a big garage there in Vigo, and he said, if you uh, teach my boys how to uh, work on cars and, and learn the business very well, I'll pay them. You don't have to pay them. I'll pay them. So he said, I'll be willing to do it. So he taught them how to do good mechanics and all of that. So, and from then on, he started. Oh, and w did you also have a grocery store? Was there a grocery store also? Yes. Uh, at first, it was a, a, a restaurant, but he wasn't making money in the restaurant. So he said, I'm going to convert it and put it in a, a grocery store. So he had a, a built, I mean, had a, a grocery store put in. And he had eight rooms for rent, eight rooms. And, and, and in the middle was a hall, and then they had four rooms here and four rooms here. So it was kind of a boarding house, too. Yes. And um, the people that went looking for jobs, he would, um, 
he s they would tell him, but we don't have a place to live. I'll give you a place to live if you p work with me. So he would do that. He would need a, a room, and then he built a little house on the back, and he put a shower in it so that they could all shower in there and everything. So it was mostly men who stayed there? Huh? Mostly men who stayed there. In this boarding house, it was mostly men? Mostly men. Mm -hmm. So your father sounds like he was a pretty incredible businessman. Oh, yes, he was. He sure was. Where did he get that from, do you think? I don't know. <laughs> do you remember stories about people in the town, like how they, uh, how he interacted with people in the town? How he what? Because he sounds like he might have been kind of a, a, a leader in the town. Well, he was very well known because since he had the businesses and all of that, he was very well known. I remember one time they were going to build a, a gin. You know when they make the... Gin? Like uh, a cotton gin? Uh, a cotton. Uh-huh. Uh, and <clears throat> um, there was a man that didn't want the gin there. So... Uh, but they did build it, and 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 the 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 man that owned uh, he owned a uh, clothing store for men, just beautiful clothes and everything. And uh, and he went and told my dad, "I thought you were my friend." And, and my dad said, "Sure, I am. I am." No, he said, "You signed for that gin." I didn't sign, he said, I did. They had forced his signature. They had forced it. So everything was, you know, discovered. So what happened? They still built the gin. Built. They built the gin. Mm -hmm. Why did some people not want a gin there? I don't know, honey. I really don't remember because I was too young for that, mm -hmm. but so w when you were growing up, Mrs. Sanchez, were the were the monjas were they Mexican or were they Anglo? Um, Mexican. They were all Mexican. Mm -hmm. Did they allow you to speak Spanish on the school grounds? Yes, mm -hmm. they would. Because I know in a lot of places that if kids spoke Spanish, I remember when they were kneeling down, <laughs> they would put little stones and. <laughs> Little down on the stones. <laughs> Why? To punish us. For what? For whatever we did that was wrong. And then they would hit us on our hands right here with a ruler. <laughs> so they were kind of mean. It sounds like it. Mm hmm So you're... Um your grandfather, Inocencio mm -hmm. Alaniz, he had he had been a very successful rancher. Is yes. that right? Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, he had 90 miles of land in Mexico. Whereabouts? I don't know. <laughs> and uh, he was very well known and because he was a very rich man. Los Alamos? I think so. Los Alamos? Mm -hmm. Atamas? Aldamas. Aldamas. Las Aldamas. Las Aldamas. Where, what state is that in? Um, it's in... Las Aldamas. I'll find out. So 90 miles, did you ever go there? Did you ever visit that? Yeah, we, yes, we did. Mm -hmm. And he would help a lot of people. A lot of uh, people that didn't have any jobs or nothing like that. And, he would help him out. And one time, um, uh, he got on the wrong side of, of the uh, politics, you know. And they were gonna, they, they uh, put him in jail. They put him in jail. And they were going to execute him. And 
this man that was a guard said, do you remember me? He said, no, I don't. He said, well, you helped me when I was uh, starving. I didn't have no job or nothing. And, and you helped me out. So now I'm going to help you. And he said, when they come for you, you hit me and hit me real hard so that they'll know that it's real. You know, they will know. And I'll have a horse for you in in the back so, so you can leave. And so that's what happened. He left and came to the United States and he knew a man, A.C. Jones, there in Beaver. <coughs> And he went to his ranch and lived with him, with, with them at, 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 in Beaver. This is your father? Yes. Okay. And he brought part of his family uh, to Beaver. And oh, your grandpa, Inocencio. That was your grandfather? Yes. Okay. So he brought part of his family, including your father? Mm hmm Okay. So did he... So. So you never went back, or how did that work? So so he had this 90-mile ranch. And he never did go back. Acres. Oh, acres, okay. Oh, oh okay. So you, so, you, but, uh, so you never went to see that? No. Okay, all right, I, I misunderstood that. Um, so how did your grandfather know A.C. Jones, do you know? I really don't know, because I know they were both rich men. And that's how come they knew each other. They were very rich, both of them. My grandfather and this A.C. Jones. He owned a bank and everything there in Beeville. So that's how, how, that's how your family ended up in Beeville then? Yes, that's right. Traded horses or horses? Horses. 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 Oh, so your, your father, or A.C. Jones, traded horses with the... With your grandfather, so that was the connection, mm -hmm. that they traded horses. Yes, yes. Okay, oh, okay, I get it now. So that's how they knew each other. Mm -hmm. So that's how you all ended up in Beeville. Mm -hmm. So when you were growing up, were there any Mexicano elected officials, like a mayor, or a city council, county commissioner? Not really. No? Mm -hmm. um, were there any uh, Mexicano police officers? No. What was what were the, um, at, when you were in high school, did you have any Mexicano or Mexicana teachers? Uh, no, I don't remember. They were all Anglo. Did they treat the, the, the Mexican kids the same as the Anglo kids? Yes, they did. They treated them very well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so tell me about uh, in high school, because um, I think you, did, you, you didn't finish high school, right? Why was that? Um, because <coughs> my dad had a, a grocery store, and he had his other businesses, garage and all of that. And um, they started taking my brothers to the war. They were going Second World War, Second World War. They started taking them. My dad said, I'm sorry, but you're gonna have to uh, leave school and, and help me with the groceries, with the grocery store, because they're taking all my boys. I said, okay. I needed six, um, five months or six months to finish high school. But I said, I don't have to. I'm not gonna learn that much in five or six months as that I don't already know. I said, I'll, I'll stay home and I'll, I'll help you with the, grocery, with the grocery store. Okay. So they started taking my brothers. They took them all over the country. My mother was always crying. Because <laughs> she would receive telegram, missing in action, prisoner of war or something or other. It was very hard for her. 
very hard. Mrs. Alanis, you had how many, how many brothers were there all together in your family? Eight. Eight sons? Eight brothers. Eight sons, okay, eight brothers. And then of those eight, which ones were the ones uh, that went to World War II? Five, five of them went to World War II. The two oldest ones were parents, and they didn't take them. And the little one was too young to go. So the other five went. They were scattered all over the country. One was at the Panama Canal. Which one was that? If you can tell me their names and where they were. Innocencio Jr. was in Panama Canal. And then um, Emiliano was in the Philippines. And uh, let's see, who else? Oh, and two were in Japan. What were their names? Huh? What were their names? Simplicio Jr. and Eustorgio. They were in, in, in Japan. And, and when we would write to them, we would tell them where they were stationed, you know. Uh, the, the ones that were in, in Japan, we would tell them just where they were stationed. And one of them, Simplicio, was an MP. And one day he went looking for my brother that was stationed there in Japan. And they said, EJ, because that's the way they called him, EJ, uh, an MP is looking for you. <laughs> he said, tell him I'm gone. Tell him I, I left a long time ago. <laughs> and, and then my, my brother MP came in. As soon as the, on the door, he said, and you didn't want to see your brother? <laughs> so then he took him in the Jeep because he was riding a Jeep and all of that. So he only knows where they went and what they did. <laughs> And there was a, there was one other brother, is that Daniel? Who? Daniel? You're no, no, Daniel. David. David. David was a, was. David the, was in Germany. Oh, David was in Germany. Okay. Mm -hmm. He was the one that was a prisoner of war for two years. So tell me about that. Tell me about um, you know you're working there in the store, and your father I guess is working in the garage. Um, I want to get into a little bit of detail. Were there some things that you couldn't sell during World War II? Yes. Tell me about that. Nylon hose and everything else was rationed. Sugar, um, toilet paper, all of that was rationed. You had to have a stamps for it. You had to bring some stamps to buy whatever, you know, you could with that, with those stamps. So everything was rationed. And we couldn't get nothing with nylon or nothing like that because it was for the parachutes, so. So those, those ration stamps, you as the, as the so store, you all would take them and then would you turn them into the government or how did mm -hmm. that work? Yeah, mm -hmm. you, had to, you had to show them that. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yes. So were you the only one working in the store at the time? At the time, yes. Mm -hmm. Were there, during the war, was there just a lot of, you couldn't, there were not that many things that you could sell, that you didn't have a lot of stuff on the shelves? What did that look like? Well, there were some things that you couldn't sell. You know, like anything with nylon, you couldn't sell, and, and a lot of things that were rationed, you couldn't sell anymore. I mean, you could sell them, but you had to have a stamps. Stamps. Were you ever worried that people were going to take things without, steal stuff without giving you no, the stamp? No. no? They were pretty good people, to all of them. That's good. So uh, your mom during this time, how did you all, you, you mentioned that you would get, I guess, letters from your brothers. Mm -hmm. What would they say in the letters? Do you remember? Oh... Uh, 
Some would say they would write the letters to my dad, but my dad could not speak English. He would, uh, he could uh, read and write in Spanish, only in Spanish. So I would read the letters to him, and they would write, Dad, we don't have any kind of cheese here like the ones we like over there in the store and this and that. And Dad, we don't have any um, whatever, Fritos or whatever it was. We don't have any over here. And, and my dad would say, pack him a package, fi fix him everything, and, and put plenty of stuff in there. Okay? So that's what I did. Answer letters and pack, put packages <laughs> together. <laughs> so when, um when you're, you're, so you would read these in English and translate them to your father in Spanish. Can you say that in Spanish? Would you just tell me in Spanish, in, in, um, in, in English, what would, how would that, how would you read that in Spanish? What do you mean? Like if, if they're writing in Spanish, how would you, you know, how would you read that in Spanish instead of English? Can you say it in Spanish? Like what they would say in the letters? Sí, mándanos queso de toda clase porque aquí no hay. Y mándanos fritos y uh, chips y all of that porque aquí no hay. So. ¿Qué tipo de, de queso querían? Oh, I don't remember, honey. All kinds of cheese. Because we had a grocery store and we had a lot of different types of cheese. So. So tell me, how big were the boxes that you would send? Oh, about this big. Not very big. About how many of those would you send in a month, those boxes? Mm. I would say about mm, three or four, not too many. So, so two of them, I guess the, I guess two of them were in, after the war, they were in Japan. But the one, David, who was in Germany, um, how, or is this is this the order that that they would if there was first there was Innocencio em, um, Emiliano Cipris Cipris Cipriciano Cipricio and uh, EJ I, EJ um, they were the older ones and David was the youngest one no no David was the oldest one. oh he was the oldest one okay so he was, was in Germany he was in Germany do you know what he was he uh, was he a paratrooper or was he do you know what he was doing there. No, he was um, like a lieutenant in, 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 during the war. And uh, they put him in charge when he was in prisoner camp, in charge of those coming in. And remember, we had a neighbor uh, they called La Marrana. <laughs> and when he came to the to where he was uh, writing down um, those that were coming in. He said, "And your name?" Enrique Garza. And he said, "La Barrada." <laughs> he, he looked up and said, "La Barrada." <laughs> so, was it was it somebody from Beeville? Yes, it's somebody from Beeville. What are the odds of that? That's crazy. Mm -hmm. So tell me about when you, was he missing in action first? Yes. Can you tell me about when you all received, because it probably was a telegram that, that you all, can you tell me about what, what how that happened? Well, my mother would receive telegrams all the time, <laughs> missing in action and <laughs> prisoner of war and all of that. It was very hard on my mother, very hard. Were either of your other brothers, Innocencio or um, Emiliano, were either one of them uh, missing in action at any time? No. So was it only David that was missing in action? Yes. And he was also a prisoner of war? Mm -hmm. Okay. So was he able to send you all letters when he was a prisoner of war? Mm -hmm. They were. Mm take a picture of it, and the letter would be this big. 
this big, like this and like this. And but we could read it. Yeah, we could read it. Do you remember what he said? Well, just that you know we don't have this and we don't have that and all of that. So even when he was a prisoner of war. Uh huh. Interesting. So when your brothers were, um, do you remember if they were drafted or if they enlisted? No, they were drafted. All of them were drafted. And so that left my dad with that, you know, hardly any help. So were they, when they were drafted, were they drafted into the Army? Mm -hmm. They all went into the always Army? Always in the Army, all of them. Did your, how did your family feel about, your parents feel about them going into the military? There was no choice, I didn't, no choice. There was a war going on and they had to take them. They had no choice. So, and they all went to the army. So when they, um, when they came back, do you remember which one came back first and did they, did they uh, come by train, or how did they get to Beeville? Uh, well, let's see. One, uh, uh, t two of them um, came to the United States uh, from Germany. Uh, uh, mm. He landed in San Francisco, and there was a man, a rich man, that was taking more boys, and he would take three boys, and and uh, take them to this big hall, when there were big dances and a lot of food and all of that. He would take them there and, and said, you give this boys whatever they need and I'm paid for it, okay? So, and he would put them on a plane and send them to San Antonio, Texas. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, they, so your brother, I guess David especially, because he was, he was in, in Germany, they, they, he went to San Antonio and then how did he get from, do you remember if y'all drove to San Antonio to pick him up, or how, how did he get to Beeville? Well, uh, yeah, we went to San Antonio to pick him up. Because mm -hmm. my dad had cars and everything. You know, he was well-to-do because he had businesses. So we would go to San Antonio and pick him up. Whoever comes to San Antonio, they we would go pick him up. And then he would take him to Mexico because there was a um, church there. He w there was a church there that mm, um, he was very attached to and he would take him over there. Which church was it? Do you remember? God only knows who it was. <laughs> Sorry. God only knows what church it was, but he was very devoted uh, to that church because there was a saint there that he was very mm, attached to. So he would take him over there. Each one, when they came home, he would take him over there. And so, and eventually they got married and all of that. And, and I remember my, uh, uncle who had a grocery store in the same block we were living in and said my dad would send the boys to go pick up he would tell them Simplicio you don't have to kill those boys by sending them to pick up you have a dump money and my dad would say is not the money. I want them to learn how to work. 
because sooner or later they're going to get married, have their families, and I'm not going to support them. I want them to support their families. And that's how come. I want them to learn how to work. So it's not the money. So that was it. And they all learn how to be hard workers, all of our brothers. I would imagine because David was the one that had been a POW, I would imagine that when when he came back, there must have been a very, very special celebration. Oh, yes, there was. Tell us about that. Um, well, I, I hardly remember, honey. I was too young. But uh, we went to pick him up in San Antonio. He had a girlfriend there in San Antonio. So um, he had my dad. Dad, can I marry her? Elvira was her name. And my dad said, of course you can. So he married her and brought her to Bivia. And they worked at the post office. Two of my brothers worked at the post office there. So mm, the rest is history. <laughs> So do you remember anything about those celebrations when when your brothers came home? Oh, honey, we had big celebrations. Big celebrations. Did you have music? Huh? Did you have music? Oh, yes. Music and everything. What, kind of, what kind of music do you remember? Like conjunto music? A piano. We had a piano, and one of the guys used to learn and knew how to play it. So he would play the piano, and we were all singing and all of that. Was there any dancing? Huh? Dancing? Did anybody oh, dance? a little bit. <laughs> a little bit of dancing. So you left school when you were how old? You were already 18 or something. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So so during that time, did you know uh, the man who would become your husband, Mr. Alanis? Did you know him? Uh -huh. Mr. Sanchez, I'm sorry. <laughs> Did you know Mr. Sanchez growing it, when you were in? It, was he from Beeville too? He was from Beeville, yeah. So you knew him when he was when you all were you grew up in the same town. Did you know each other growing up? No, I didn't know him at all. I didn't meet him until after he got out of the service. He was in the service for six years, and when he came back, that's when we met. How did you all meet? Well, we used to go to dances every week. And um, uh, he was a very good dancer. And at that time, there was a clapping, you know. Uh, all the guys, all the men, would get in the middle of the hall. And, and we were all dance around them. And, and they would come and clap, you know, clap the guy so that he he could, I could dance with the other one, you see? So sometimes I would, uh, I would dance with four or five guys in one song. <laughs> Everybody kept clapping. <laughs> so anyway, and one time he, he said, do you wanna be my girlfriend? I said, well, let me think it over. He said, don't think it over long, because I, 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 I need to uh, get on with my life. I said, okay, I will be your girlfriend. And that's how we started. Was he older than you? Six years. Six years older than you. So he wanted to, he was ready to settle down. Yeah. You must have had many, many suitors, Mrs. Sanchez. Yes, I did. I can't complain. <laughs> can't complain. How did you uh, choose him from all the other young men who were well, interested? Well, I, I just liked him, and, and he was a very good dancer, and as I come, I chose him. What was he like that, that you liked? Because I, I bet you there were a lot of guys that would have... Uh, did, did he sing you a song? Huh? Did he sing a song to you? Yes, he did. When was that? <laughs> when we were courting. No, we weren't, we weren't even courting. We, I had a date with another guy, and we had a little um, um, 
some place out in the woods, and there was water running and everything, and a uh, uh, very nice little place. And I had to eat with somebody else. And But it was me and two other girls. We went and sat down on the grass, and they said that. And all of a sudden, this guy came and, and sat close to me. And it wasn't him. It was a, another guy. And so he passed by and just ignored me because I, I was with another guy. So, and then later on he said, I was gonna go sit with you, but you had somebody else? I said, yeah, well, he just went and sat there with me. Mm. That was it. And, 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 and then later on, mm, uh, he went and sat with me there at the at the place where we were having the, like a picnic, and he sang a song <laughs> to me. <laughs> no, that was it. What was the song? Um, something moon, something about the moon or something. I remember the name of it. Did he have a good voice? Ah, pretty good. <laughs> Not terrific, but it was okay. <laughs> Did he sing a lot to you after that? No. <laughs> Not hardly any. Well, there must have been something about him that you liked enough to marry him, because that's, that's a huge commitment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For one thing, he was a very good dancer. That's the one thing I remember about him. And he loved dancing. So that was one thing that attracted me to him. You know, young guys are going to be watching this, and they're going to be saying, that's a, that's a secret to get the, get the good-looking girls is in order to dance. <laughs> be a good dancer. <clears throat> so um, you were working at your dad's... Um, at your dad's uh, grocery store. Every grocery store, but let me just go back a little bit. So your da your husband, he danced. What kinds of dances did he do? What kind of dances? Like yeah, like polkas. Everything, everything. He could dance everything. Where did he learn to dance so well? I don't know. So could you keep up with him? Yeah. Could you keep up with him? Oh, I sure did. I sure did. <laughs> Let me ask you this. So, so you said that every weekend you all would dance. Where were these dances? And, and they were about a few blocks from where I lived, where, where we had the garage and all the businesses and all of that. Uh, it was a few blocks from there. It was called the fairground, the fairground. And uh, sometimes they would bring carnivals and put the carnivals out there too. Carnivals. Oh, carnivals, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And... So is it uh, like a concrete floor and no roof or? How? No, no, they had a roof and everything. Oh, it was like a building. Yeah, okay. it was a big building, big building. Mm -hmm. How fun. Our young people today don't have something like that. They're missing out. <laughs> I think so. So at some point, did you not work as in a jewelry store or something? Yes. Tell me about that. How did that happen? Well, let me see. We had a fire in Beeville, and the fire destroyed a lot of the businesses that we had. And, and uh, one time uh, they told me uh, Mr. Bergo was the owner of one of them, of the jewelry store. And they said, Mr. Bernicle wants you to go and work for him for about two weeks. I said, just two weeks is all I'm going to work. Okay. I went to work at the jewelry store. And when two weeks passed by, I do you want me to come back Monday? Yes, I want you to come back Monday. 
Okay. The next week, you want me to come back Monday? Yes, I want you to go work, come back to work Monday. And I stayed on <laughs> ever since. And then after he died, I was able to run the jewelry store. So I was running the jewelry store. I was buying the jewelry, the diamonds, and everything. I would go to market in Dallas and, and get everything we needed, chains and everything. And, and that was it. I stayed on at the jewelry store for uh, 32 years. 32 years. Even after you had your children? Hmm? Even after you had your children? Yes. You were a working mom. Mm-hmm. So tell me about, <clears throat> you got married what year? 1950. 1950. And then uh, your first child was born what year? Huh? What year was your first child wa- born? In 51. 51. Mm-hmm. Um, so so where did, the, where did the, the children stay while you were working? With my mother. With my mother. I would take them over there to the, her house, and she would take care of them. Mm-hmm. How wonderful. Mm-hmm. It was great because she, she would take good care of them. Mm-hmm. And Mrs. Sanchez, you had how many children? I had um, Missy. Three girls, three three daughters. That's all I had. No boys. Even though my husband always wanted a boy, I never had a boy. <laughs> but each one of my girls had a boy. So I have three grandsons. <laughs> Did you ever think about? Uh moving away from Beeville? Not really, because uh, all of my nephews were there. They were my brother's sons, and they were there, and they had uh, businesses. They had businesses already and all of that, and, and anything I needed, I could just call them, and they would come right away. He said, Atia, if you don't, if you, if you need something, just call us. If we can't go, we'll send somebody. So that's how come I never moved from Beagle. Because that's where I was born, in Beagle. And you also have, uh, at least one of your daughters still lives in Beagle, right? Not anymore. Oh, so nobody lives. So none, none of your girls live in Beeville anymore. Mm-hmm. Okay. Not anymore. Okay. One lives in San Antonio, one lives in Austin, and one lives in in in, in Bryan, Bryan, Texas, Bryan College Station. Okay. Um, so what was? How did you decide to retire from the jewelry store? To retire? Uh huh. Well, I told them. Uh. uh I'm getting my Social Security, so I'm not going to be working that long anymore because I want to go see my kids because none of them lived in Bingham. So, and they said, okay. So they hired me for two days a week, and that's how I learned how to be home more, you know what I mean, and be able to retire. Yeah, that's... that's uh I'm sure you were very accustomed to just being on the go every day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, but then you went to another jewelry store, right? Hogue's Jewelry. Yeah. So tell me about that. How did that happen? Well, they sold the jewelry store where I was working. Uh-huh. So I went to the other jewelry store to Hogue's and asked them if they would hire me. And they said, yes, we'll hire you right away, but we can pay you what they were paying you over there. I said, that's all right. I'll work myself, myself up. I'll and work what? 
I'll work myself up okay. to to where I could earn more money. So they hired me. I was there 14 years, 14 years with it, and 22 on the other. That's so pretty amazing. A lot of years. So were you a saleswoman? Is that what you were doing? Yes. Then? So, so what are the secrets of sales of selling jewelry? Huh? What are the secrets of selling jewelry? Oh, you have to <laughs> be very nice with people and kind of um, treat them like eggs. <laughs> you know, treat them very nice and and all of that. Mm. But I had a lot of customers. And some that will wait for me. If I would go to the cleaners to get my clothes, one time they couldn't find my clothes. And so it took me longer. So finally I got back at the jewelry store and said, Honey, we've been waiting for you for an hour. I said, Oh my God, I'm sorry. But they lost my clothes and I couldn't find they couldn't find it. Uh, okay. So I sold them uh, uh, a set of uh, diamonds, uh, you know, the the engagement ring, and the, and the wedding band, and everything. So and that's how it all started. Were you working on commission? Huh? Were you working no, on no? No, it was just straight no, salary. No, just a salary. So, were there ever sometimes when a customer would surprise you? By well, were there times when a cu when customers would surprise you by buying something that you thought maybe it was too expensive for them to afford, or it really wasn't their taste, or wasn't well, really no, uh, uh, there was a lawyers living uh, in, uh, in the same building where we had the jewelry store. They would come and buy expensive jewelry, expensive ring for their wives and all that. So that's how we make the money. Mm -hmm. So when you had your own daughters, what kind of um, advice did you give to them about being out in the world? They didn't need any advice. <laughs> they, they knew what they wanted. They knew what they wanted. So, and they all had boyfriends, and, and you know. So, eventually they got married and everything. So, that was it. So did you ever encourage them to, to get an education? To what? To get an education? Oh, yes, definitely. Why was that? Because I didn't get one. I didn't get an education. Just what I learned from being in the business, but I didn't have no education. I just didn't even finish high school. So I encouraged them. So. Yeah, so it sounds like you got things done. You didn't need an education so much for for getting things done. But you regret not not finishing high school? Huh? Do you regret not no, finishing? No, no. I don't regret it at all. Because what could I learn in six months that I didn't already know? So you never thought about going to college? No. But I did want my daughters to go. They all went to UT, University of Texas. All three of them. So, why did you feel like it was important for them to get an education? Because so they could have a better living and not work as hard as I was working. That's how I Okay. So I guess one of the daughters went to A and I. One that went to A and I, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The oldest one. Okay. And the others went to UT. Um, is there anything that I haven't asked that I should I should ask? Is there anything I haven't asked you that you think I should that you want to add? 
No, I think you've asked everything that I <laughs> I could answer. Well, I mean, just, I don't know, just the fact that she really in, you know, pushed us to do things and, and encouraged us and, and was guiding us all the way and helped with our kids and everything. So did you, uh, were you able to, when, when, your, when your kids were small, your mom was the one who was taking care of them, right? Mm -hmm. Were you able to, to do that for your daughters? Yes. Uh, they were living away from where I was. But I went to my bosses. I'm going to have to take off a week or two because my daughter's going to have a baby, and I need to go see her. I need to go be with her. And I was always over there with them for about two weeks, and then I'd come back. And my friends would tell me, what if they would have told you not, you couldn't go? I said, I'd go anywhere. I'd go anyway. I'd go anyway. If they want to let me go, that's fine. Oh, tell me about um, the home remedies that you used for your kids, for your grandkids, and I guess for your daughters, too. When they were little, did you ever curarlos de ojo? Or oh, the... yes, always. What was that like? Tell me, tell me what it's like, and why do you have to curar somebody de ojo? Because my little girl, which is the older one now, had real curly hair, blonde and curly hair. And one night, she got so sick uh, from her, uh, here from the back, and, and I had an old lady that was a, a neighbor of mine that always came to Curarla de Ojo. And uh, I would send my husband, I said, go tell Doña Elvira to come and, and, and cure her the ojo. So there he goes. And it was fine. She was fine. So when you when to to do so, the reason that you need to curar somebody de ojo, it's because somebody has looked at her and said, uh, "How pretty!" But n wouldn't touch him. Wouldn't touch him. Mm -hmm. I remember one time, my sister, older sister, she was horrible about ojo. We went to a wedding in Alice, Texas, and uh, this uh, a lady was coming with a big container of um, of um, the drink. What do you call it? The drinks for the wedding. Um, Ochata? Hmm? or ham uh, agua de Jamaica, or mm -mm -mm. what do they call the the drink for the wedding? Punch. Punch. A punch. A big uh, deal of punch. A big one. Punch balls. And then all of a sudden, in the middle of the hall, which she was crossing, a whole rim fell off. It was my sister. She said, Yo le hice ojo because I wanted to touch her, to touch her, but I couldn't. That was it. So um, I understand that your husband and you would take care of uh, of your daughter and your son-in-law's, um, the Sanchez Benavides 2J Ranch. Yeah. Tell me about what did you do for that, and how many acres is that? Uh, we have about 30 acres over there. You had some sort of sore in your head? Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so you had, so you had a, uh, they had a ranch uh -huh. and they had cows. Yeah. And so at what point did you all take care of this for them? Well, we would go there because nobody would leave in there in Beaver. Uh, we would go and get some trees from the nursery 
and measure them uh, ten, 10 inches apart. And we plant them as, on the, as we would go in. We uh, plant the trees, all of them. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so, and, and then uh, the, we would uh, uh, put the uh, uh, pipes so they could water them, so, so they could water, you know, get the water. So, so we did that, and one time we went to uh, put uh, uh, food uh, uh, for the cows, and my husband dropped his glasses. The white cow <laughs> went and stepped on his glasses. <laughs> yeah, and. Then we go to Corpus the next day to get new glasses because <laughs> he could hardly see. <laughs> he, uh, he was so funny. So you had rental properties. You all you had kind of. I guess you must have inherited some of the business bug from your father because you had rental properties. Yes. In Beeville. Yes. We had rental property. And you thought that was a good thing for your daughters as well to buy some rental properties. Yes, mm -hmm. because that brought you money. You know, you could have money with your rental properties. Mm -hmm. Very good. Wait a second. And you own you uh, joined a dance. A dance club when you yes. were, when was that? And tell me about that. Golly, I don't remember when it was, but uh, we had a dance club, Bolios and Mexicanos, both. And once a month we had a dance, and people from all over came, from the little towns and from Corpus and everything. And we had somebody at the door all the time, so nobody would come in. And so uh, that's our club. So you had themes at the at the dance club. You would have a theme that you all would decorate it and stuff. Huh? You had themes, different themes for the oh, dances. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How often would this be? Once a month. Once a month. And Once. what what were some of the themes that you all had? Oh God, only those, honey. I don't remember anymore. It's been a long time. <laughs> that sounds like so much fun. Mm -hmm. It was a lot so of fun. So you and your husband kept on dancing. Huh? You and your husband kept on dancing. Oh, honey, all the time, always. He was a big dancer. He loved dancing. He loved music. Very nice. I guess that's all. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mrs. Sanchez. I really appreciate uh, this interview.